I'm going to talk about the EBI or the Economic Reading Index. I'm going to focus on three main aspects. What does it currently look like? What have we achieved through selection on the EBI over the last 20 years? And I'm going to finish off with that, where I see the future for the EBI. But before I dive into that, I want to just take a step back and say, well, why are we interested in breeding? So there's a number of different reasons. Firstly, it's a proven technology. It's not a snake oil. We've shown time and time again. I don't think there's any technology uh, that has been tested as much in Ireland as it has breeding. And time and time again, it shows to have delivered. The gains that we've achieved, they build over time or they accumulate. So the herds that people have today is a function of the breeding policy for the past few decades. The gains, they can be permanent. So it's not like some non-breeding techniques like feeding. If you stop feeding the animal, then it'll go back in milk production. That doesn't happen with breeding. It holds that potential. We don't need to change the farm management, be it AI or be it stock bulls. It's as easy to use a good bull as it is to use a bad bull. And there's no cost. There's no additional cost to this. Again, not like the, the non-breeding techniques. Because the cow has to go and calf to produce milk, you've got almost complete adoption rate. And importantly also, it's sustainable. But really to me, the most important point is it stacks or it's really complementary to the non-breeding techniques or the advancements that we're currently achieving in management. So what does the EBI look like? Well, the EBI, and this is important, it's only a tool. It's a tool from which we have collapsed huge amounts of information of individual animals into a single value. So underpinning that value, there are what we call subindexes, And you can see the subindexes here on this particular slide. The two main ones, as most of you probably well know, because they're the real drivers of profit in, in dairy herds, are milk and fertility. And you can see from this graphic that they make up over half the emphasis. A new subindex, which was added at the end of last year, is the carbon subindex. So when we think about breeding, if you think about the bulls that are being picked up at the moment to go into AI, they're not going to inseminate a cow until next year. Then you have a nine-month gestation. You're waiting then two years for the calf to become a cow and start producing. So we need to be always thinking into the future. And yes, there's no carbon tax or anything like that on, on, on Irish dairy cows, but maybe there will be in the future. So we always need to be ahead of the game. Now, there are the different sub-index components, but of course, underpinning those are individual traits. And it's, you can easily go onto the ICBF website, dig into individual bulls. Rather than looking at their milk subindex, you can look at their milk kgs, fat kgs, protein kgs, fat percentage, protein percentage. So as you can see, all of that information of the individual traits has been collapsed into the subindexes, which in turn are being collapsed into a single EBI figure. So what have we achieved? And I'm showing you here in this graphic, at the bottom is the year of calving. So this is the entire Irish dairy herd, the 1.5 million cows that we have at the, at the moment. And on the vertical is the profit per lactation. Two lines that most people probably would have seen before, the green is the fertility. So the EBI was launched in around the year 2001, and I brought everything back to zero around then. Took us a while to get the momentum of the breeding program going. But what you can see in around 2000 and, you know, 2008, 2009, fertility started to improve. It, 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 the bend started to, to turn up wise and, and the profit accruing from fertility improved. Milk is almost a straight line going up. The profit from increased milk production per lactation is increasing year on year. So we're increasing our overall profit. Now, uh, a trend that probably many of you, the vast majority of you, haven't seen before is this red one. This is the new carbon subindex, which I just talked about. It's, the numbers are a lot, uh, a lot lower, but what we can see is that through the initial years, the carbon subindex values were getting worse. So the profit was reducing. And that's because milk was going up, so the cows were eating more and therefore producing more methane, but uh, fertility was not improving. But look what's happening in the last few years. Our carbon uh, value of our animals is starting to improve. Why? Yes, milk is still going up and these cows are still producing more milk and therefore we expect them to be producing more, more, more methane, but the fertility is improving. So we're getting these cows to produce most of this milk off of the likes of grass. So this is a hugely positive story. You could look at this and say, oh, we're flatlining in carbon. Yes, we are, but we're doing this at the same time as we're increasing milk production. This is an unbelievable story. If we add all these indexes together, we get the EBI, and this is profit per lactation. We have clearly shown that a one unit change in profit uh, of the EBI gives you a two unit profit change uh, per lactation in a herd. And look what's happened over the last 20 years. 
our EBI today is on in the national herd is 150 euros greater than what it was 20 years ago. So just purely based on this, our dairy cows today are 300 euros more profitable than what they were 20 years ago. And the other good news about it is when you count for this, this uh, efficiencies, it equates over that time period to a 14% improvement in the carbon footprint per kilo of milk solids produced over that time period, at the same time as we're also improving nitrogen use efficiency. So is there room for improvement? Yes, we're constantly challenging ourselves. Is there new traits that we should include? Or should we do what we're currently doing even better? And MAGS is developing a new fertility sub-index, which hopefully we could have launched in the next few months or, or, or so. But if we talk about what are the new traits, in order for a trait to be considered in a breeding index like the EBI, it must fulfill three criteria. Firstly, it must be important. It must be either economically important, socially important, or environmentally important. Two, there must be genetic differences. There is genetic differences in almost everything. So that's a, that's a no-brainer. And three, and this is often the most difficult one, is it must be measurable. So when I stand back from the index, the EBI, and I look at, well, what could we do better? Or what are we missing? I think there's three things. First is product quality. So that's milk and meat quality. Yes, we have fat and protein, but can we get down to a more granular level? And that point of differentiation compared to other products. The second one relates to efficiencies. So environmental efficiency, methane emissions, et cetera, the ability to convert feed in, into milk production better. And then the third one I think we could do a lot better on is health and disease. Our cows are going to get older and older as our fertility gets better and better. So I believe that health, and health is going to become our next barrier to achieving sustainable gains. So just, Stuart, just before I finish, because it is a real topical thing at the moment, is the whole issue of methane emissions. I'm just going to focus on that second point there. Is there genetic differences amongst Irish dairy cows in how much methane they produce? Simple answer is yes. And this graphic is showing you, this is data from Moorpark, where we've measured the methane of individual cows over a whole lactation, right, on grass. What I'm showing you here, look at the methane output on the bottom. So some cows you can see there are they're putting out, they're exhaling around 210 grams of methane per day, while there's cows in the extreme almost double it, 400 grams of methane per day. This is what we call the next generation herd in, in, in Moorpark, which is, the red is the elite, they're the, the top EBI cows in the country. The blue is the national average. And just for comparative purposes, I also put in the jerseys, which would traditionally be a, a smaller breed, of course. What you can see is, and you might be disappointed, but you might see, well, okay, there's the elites and the national averages that are across the whole span. And this is actually what we see. And it's exactly, it stacks up completely with what I just showed you. That the EBI, as we select for, for higher EBI, we're not actually increasing their methane output but we're increasing their milk solids. So from a kilo of, of methane per kilogram of milk solids, we're actually achieving massive genetic gain. So with that, Stuart, I think look, the future is unbelievably bright. From a breeding perspective, I've shown you why it's so important. I've demonstrated again and again as to we are achieving genetic gain in profit, sustainable profit over the, that period. And thirdly, I think there is a massive scope for including new traits within our index.